Five Live Boxing. Uh, Welcome to Five Live Boxing. We're back in Bournemouth. We were here in the summer. That was a great night. We're back here in late December. It's also been a great night. Chris Billum Smith, CBS, the hero of all Bournemouth. He won against a very tricky and dangerous, dangerous Kosovan who's based in Germany. But it wasn't just about CBS. Caroline Dubois, Olympian, just 21 years of age, and a woman who could possibly take the female boxing revolution to previously uncharted heights as we go forward. She was on the bill. She won in 60 seconds. It was, I can assure you, a very special night in Bournemouth. I'm Steve Bunt, and this is Five Live Boxing. And alongside me now, and alongside me for the fight, and alongside me for, in fact, Chris Billum Smith's fight here in the summer, Chevron Clark, Olympian, unbeaten professional. First of all, your first impressions of the fight that ended a few minutes ago, or five or six minutes ago, Chef? You know, the fight started off slow for Chris. His opponent was looking very dangerous. But, you know, Chris settled, used his leg, got his, his range right, and um, what an emphatic finish. And it was a clinical finish. Did, did, I'm going to ask you this, and did you think he had a finish? I know he could knock people out, but did you think he had a finish like that, to put, put together those two or three punches like that? Because they were put together with real venom. No, I've never seen him do that, and I'm, I'm, I it's, agree. Not, it's not associated with him, but it's obviously something he's been working on, and uh, it came through for him tonight. And the crowd here, I know when we were here in the summer, it was boiling. I mean, it was genuinely 40-odd degrees out there. The sea was lovely and blue, and the crowd was in here, it was hot. They came out tonight as well, and we're this close to Christmas, and the tickets weren't cheap. They're not, they're not giveaway tickets. Look, this is how good the crowd were, right? When we came in here, it wasn't fully full. Yeah, right? it was a little bit chilly. Yeah, yeah it was a little bit chilly. On. Yeah, right. When they were in here, I had my t-shirt off and I felt good. Now it's a Comfort. little bit empty. You're going back I'm to being cold be, again. A yeah. bit cold. So that's how good the crowd was tonight. And it's a crowd that's buying into it. I mean, you know, my first fight in my first I was here years ago for schoolboy championships and, and junior ABAs. But my first professional fight in Bournemouth was that one in the summer. And I thought, and I'm going to be honest, I thought, I wonder if that's a one-off. What if they just come out because it's the summer and it's all part of a sort of sun, you know, a fun Saturday night? No, they came out today. They were on each other's shoulders. They were singing all of our boxing anthems. They got into it. No, they did. And what's, what I thought about it was in the summer, it was good. But I feel um, personally that tonight it was louder because there was they had like an orchestra in front of them. Yeah, good point. That's just some... Uh, some 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 dry ice going off on the stage, even though the place is the place is thinning. We, we're gonna, hopefully going to just grab a word with with Ben Shalom, the promoter. Just going to grab a couple of quick words with Ben Shalom. Come over, Chef. Hello, Ben. First of all, I'm not even sure where to start here, but we'll, 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 first of all, congratulations. It looks yeah. like we'll be here next year. Chris Billum Smith. Yeah. He was hurt in the second. He was. I mean, let, let's. You were standing up at, at the end of the second. You know. that, that, those, that was a tough minute or two. It was, but we knew he was going to have to come through. That Ho Hajj was always going to come out fast and was always going to... He's a volume puncher and he had eight weeks and he came in the fittest we've ever seen. Our team knew this was a proper fight and it was a proper fight for the fans and that's what we wanted. We wanted a war, but we never expected Chris Billum Smith to be able to do a knockout like that. Oh, no, no, that's, we were talking about that. We, we know he can knock people out. We know he can hit people on the chin, but he put together, what, three or four punches there. That was a, ve a vicious, venomous finish. Let, let me ask you this, Ben, and I'm going to ask you this, okay? And you, you and I have known each other a few years now. We've worked together. That was... And I, and I said it before, and I've not been enough time. That was a risky fight. We knew it was a risky fight. Honestly, there's so many. But you didn't people. need it. No, but, no, but <laughs> the point is, it's world level opposition. His best fight on his record is probably Tommy McCarthy, maybe Isaac, but Isaac had been out a long time. Yeah. You can't just go straight to world level and not have that one in between. I could not believe you. You, you know, you have these boxing experts calling this a tune-up. I, no I was, way. I couldn't believe it. Mm. People do not. There's a lot of people that think they know boxing, but my God, they don't. That was a serious well, fight, and we knew Chris Billen Smith was going to have to be his best to come through. Well, well Chev and I in comms before we went before the fight started, we both said the same thing. You know, you could have taken a lot of an easier touch here. You could have found an old, an old, an old cruiserweight from years ago. You took a risky one, and in that second round, Chev. We, we we were up as well. We were up with Ben. Yeah, we were. We like, want to come here in the like, summer what, as well for that, an yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he came through. He did well. He recovered well. And uh, you know, he re-established re his jab, re-established his range, and uh, he came through. What's the point in in taking him to world level 
if, if he can't come through really tough fights like that. And so so it's either learn now or learn later. Yeah. And we've learned now that he can come through those those difficult moments. Now, with, with regards to, to, to searching for a, a, a world champion, a fight for him, yeah. Opatai seems to be the one that keeps coming up. And, and his yeah. manager or promoter was here in the summer. Was. Obviously, you remember that. Yeah. And, 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 and in theory, we will be back here. We will be outdoors. I mean, I can't ask you for dates and stuff, but you know, just, just, just tell me I'm in the right vicinity. You were in the right vicinity. It's definitely going to be outdoors. We have a great relationship with Dean Lonergan. That cruiserweight division is on fire, and it's great to see because the cruiserweights never got the, the claim that they always maybe should have got, and now they're getting it. It will be outdoor. However, I oh, never mentioned Jay Alpatai there, but I always have loved the reach of react poor fight and that rematch and i have to be honest because they both come on leaps and bounds now and are bordering on world level both in their own right i think that's a bigger fight however chris bill and smith does deserve a world title mm. opportunity and he'll get what he wants but it will definitely be outdoor in, in bournemouth stadium next year but in, in all fairness the react poor fight even though it wouldn't be for a, a, a world title it would still generate the type of money that got, the guys would like to get for world probably titles. More, that fair probably more Probably more. That's a huge fight. So that, that puts it in. Let me let, stay there, Ben. Let me put it to you, Chef. You've got an option there. You, you fight someone that's beating you, and you get a little, a, a lot, maybe a lot more money, or you fight for a world title for less money. What do you do, Chef? I'm putting you on. You got to earn your money tonight, son. Go on. Well, you know, as you said, you got to earn your money, and you know, we're in this game to look good, but we're also in this game to feed our families. So I'd choose the option that helped to secure my family over the long run. That is a sensible pro, Ben. Trust it me, is. man. I it like is. that. I like it that is. in him. And we want to see good fights you know sometimes you see titles and and this and that but really fans want to see the best possible fights and and finally ben, before i let you go because you and i've talked a lot today um in the summer was off the scale with the heat and i just thought perhaps there was a deal where you got a donkey ride an ice cream some popcorn and you got a ticket to this for like three and a half quid or something <laughs> tonight the crowd i don't know what the figures were but if it was 20 less it couldn't have been more than 20 no, no, no. this was sold outrageous? out this was sold out they love chris bill and smith Every place knew Chris Bill and Smith was fighting tonight. They're putting Bournemouth on the map. I've never seen a crowd that sits in from 7 p.m. Yeah. 7 p.m. Really singing point. through everything. And that knockout in front of this crowd has yeah. just created an absolute thunderstorm in Bournemouth, ready for a sold out stadium that's, next summer. That's what Chev and I said. We said if they were selling tickets outside now, they'd sell five they'd sell five or six thousand yeah. as a Christmas gift. Bosh, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Bosh. <laughs> ben, before before I let you go, before I let you go, um, Caroline Dubois against yet another Argentinian. People will say, oh, she blew away. That woman doesn't get stopped. She's tough. That was that was some finish. Probably the same people saying that was a tune-up that are saying that Chris Caroline Dubois should be And you gave away 4,000 tickets. She, yeah, exactly. She, <laughs> this was her fifth fight of the year. This is her first year as a professional. When she came into the office, we knew we had a superstar on our hands. That's incredible. That, that girl, that fighter, Sofia Rodriguez, has never been stopped ever been stopped. She was just blown away by speed and power that you just don't see in women's boxing. Caroline Dubois, I promise you, is going to be the biggest name in female sport for years to come. Ben, it's a pleasure. Chef and I are going to go search backstage, speak to Chris Bill and Smith, maybe grab a word of a few other people. Ben, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers, mate. So let's let Ben get off. He's got a, various people he's got to talk to. And we will speak about Caroline and Depp. Because we'll, I know, you, obviously, you're great friends of her teammates from Tokyo. And we'll get, we'll get into her dressing room. But as Richard React poured out, I want to see if he's, he's just doing something with uh, uh, James Sanandra from Sky. Let's see if we can grab, if we can grab a, a minute or two with Richard. Which, first of all... Um, Great to see you. Yeah, nice now that your tie's been sorted out by Ronald McIntosh. <laughs> no, no, true. Um, I've got a video of that. I've been, asking I've been asking people, that was a great finish there. It wasn't just, you know, catching a guy with a good shot. It's an instinctive thing. You let three or four go as the guy's dropping. Um, I wasn't sure that Billum Smith had that type of finish in him. I know he could take a man out. I know he could drop a man. But that was, um, that, was a, that was a good finish. That was a quality finish. That was a quality finish for sure. You know, he landed a shot. He landed another one, he followed up, he saw a gap and he, and he landed that shot and it was quite quick, you know, very rapid. So, and it was a KO and everybody loves to see a KO. So that's, that's great on his behalf. It's, it's great on his behalf and it's great on the cruiserweight business behalf and it's not too bad on your behalf. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, th th there's a sort of suggestion that the world title fight is obviously what all fighters want a world title fight. We know that. But a, f a rematch between you and him would generate, well, I'm going to say, it would probably generate more interest and more money. Yeah, that would ge generate a lot of money. Everybody loves to see the domestic fights. And, you know, we, you know to, to be honest, we tried to make that fight for, for January. Yeah. But I don't know, one thing fell through or, 
you know. Maybe I think they want to go outside. I think they want to yeah, go, I yeah, I think I they think go outside probably, in May, you know, at the football pitch. Yeah, they probably want to, you know, do it big. And, um, you know, everybody has their reasons, you know. It's, it's, just, it's a business as, as well. But, you know, I'm ready to go any time. So you'd have, I mean, provided the money was right, was of the sums I've got right up, but you'd have no problem fighting Bill and Smith course, here in Bournemouth Outdoors. I'm a, I'm a professional boxer, you know, and, and this is what we do. It would be terrible for me to be turning turning down fights. Even though I'd be in, I, I could just be in better next time. Mm. And that makes that makes all the sense in the world, Chef. Yeah, and, and, and what Chef and I agreed on is that, you know, obviously Bill and Smith wants a world title fight. We all want, you know, all you guys deserve and want world title fights. But if it comes to a situation where there's more money in a domestic showdown, what would you, let me ask you what you would do. So you've got a world title fight, maybe, but it's going to be a lot less money than a domestic rematch. What would you do? I'm a prize fighter, so I'm going to go where the money is. <laughs> you see? The, Wherever the, the money's at, that's where I'm going to be at. I'm so surrounded you know. by the, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, the money. Come on, my guy. <laughs> it's the truth. But yeah, that's it. It's true. You have to, yeah, like, is. listen, this, this is a dangerous sport. My guy, Isaac Chamberlain, what are you saying? You good? Yes, yeah, man. yeah. So yeah, this is this is a dangerous sport, and we need to make sure that we're paid handsomely for these fights that the public want to see, and um, it's, it's a business. And let me ask you this finally, Richard. Before I know you got people queuing up to, to, to talk to you. Have you been in the sea, Chris? I mean, do, do, do you speak to him? You know, you, yeah, I speak you, to him. Yeah. You know, we have a great relationship. You know, I, I really wanted him to win tonight, and especially in that fashion. If you heard my prediction, I, I believe that he would KO him within six, and he's done, done just that. You know, it was a bit scary though watching, honestly, yeah, for the first round. couple of rounds. He was, he was, he was, he was hurt there. Huh? Please don't mess up the money. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's the bottom line. Because Ben, Ben was up. Ben, hey, ben, ben, Jerry was, Maguire out here. ben was worried as well. Ben, yeah. ben, Ben doesn't move and he gets up in that second round. Absolutely, we all want to come back with thirty thousand. I mean, that's what we want. Exactly. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure and a delight yeah. with you. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Well, let's, let, yeah, let's go, Chef. Let's, let, let's, go let's go find someone. It's a, it's a busy corridor. Chris Billis was just there. Just, just, Chris, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes of your time. You've got a drink. You've still got your bandages on. You've had a few stitches in your eye. How many stitches have you had in your eye, uh, first of all? Five stitches. A little head clash uh, in the second, I think it was, maybe. Or, th yeah. or th yeah, I can't remember. A good fight. A hard fight. They loved it. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, don't think the corner loved it too much to begin with. But, of course uh, they didn't. You got caught with a couple of shots and you had a great fight. But um, but no, you know, uh, I knew, knew you know, Barry McGuigan always says it. He says, if you get caught with the first, don't get caught with the next one. Um, so, you know, he's hitting me one shot and then I was making sure I wasn't getting hit clean after that. Um, but yeah, you know, we got the job done, adapted well. And we said, and we know when after timers, I, I thought that was a hard fight. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I share Ben Shalom's view that people suggested it was a walkover and it was this and it was a chew and it was warm. You know, that kid had an awful lot to gain. He's a good fighter. He's an aggressive fighter. Uh, and, and, and he did his best to try and suck you in to his fight. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's... I've seen him against Masternek, who's, you know, been world-class for so, so many years. Um, and he was giving him trouble... Um, and then he, he walked onto a shot, you know, and he, he keeps coming forward. We were aware of the dangers. We were aware of the danger of the right hand, which obviously he caught me up a couple of times in the second. But, um, but yeah, you know, we, we were aware and that's all that matters, what, what we think and not what other people think of it being a walk over job. Absolutely. Except. A couple of things before you go, because I, I know you've got people waiting for you in there, including, including your family. Um, the, the finish was, I mean, listen, I know you can hurt people. I know you can drop people. But I, I wasn't sure you could do what you did there, that two or, two or three punch where you're turning around, you're, you're hitting him as you go down it was like an old-fashioned knockout that was a that was a that was a that was a clinical finish it was a great finish yeah yeah and I, 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 I didn't know you had a finish like that in you i really didn't no I, I, I've, honest. I've uh you know i put uh, hurt him a couple of times um and then obviously towards the end you know he's sort of falling forward after i hurt him and just opened him up and then his hands were by his side but he was still standing so you obviously you got to take that shot and thankfully he is obviously okay mm, so so much for the gentleman tag eh? it's gone <laughs> that, eh? that's that, gone down the cars that. you know no disrespects no it's uh that, that's that's <laughs> the irony of it right in in the ring you can't be a gentleman and and fi and finally um in the summer, okay, we thought it was just, it was a great night. The, you know, the sun was out. It was still light when we came in. It was still light when we got out. It was hot. It was a festival. There'd been no boxing in Bournemouth. So you come closer to Christmas. It's hard times. It's not cheap to get in here tonight. And the same amount of people have come. They've created the same. In fact, Chevron Clark thinks they created more noise. They love you down here. Yeah, um, um, so, you know, we're back here because of them at the end of the day. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for, for them. You know, they've uh, they turned out, like you said, against somebody who 
even us in the you know boxing industry had never really heard of um and they've turned up and they're in their in their thousands and uh came out to support me so i'm so grateful for that and when we come back the sun will be out again we'll be outdoors it'll be a massive fight either a world title fight or maybe a domestic fight who knows as long as the money's there as long as the crowd's there you'll be there yeah, you know, we want that world title fight uh, at Dean Court or the Vitality Stadium now. Um, so, yeah, you know, that, that's that's a dream for me. Um, so let's, let's let's get that over the line. I'm going to let you go with Shane because I think he's I think he's edging to have a, look, a couple of few words before you get in there. I don't think Shane liked it in the second round. I don't think he liked it. No. I'm, I'm going to put that to you, Shane. You didn't like that second round. Oh, listen, I knew he was, I knew he was compass mentor, so I could see in his eyes he... He got hit with a good shot and he nodded. You know, he went, shouldn't get, shouldn't be getting hit with that. But listen, it's that guy's ranked in the top 15 in the world. He's a heavy handed guy. He's got nothing to lose. He's, he comes to, he comes to wing over the top. I said, stay low after the first round. But, you know, listen, it woke him up. And um, what finish? It was a finish. Shane, thanks for your time. Chris, thanks for your time. I really Thank appreciate you, that. Cheers. Get rid of them. Well thanks very much, fellas. Well so so Shane, Shane and Chris Billum Smith have left. And coming towards me was someone um, that usually works with us here and I wasn't sure if he was coming over to say what time do I start. Uh, George Groves. George, um, some finish from, from him there. I mean, I mean, I know Chris Billen Smith can box. I know he can drop people. I know he can hurt people. I didn't know he could put punches together like that. That, no, was, that, was, that was clinical. Yeah, he can. He can now. I know I he think, can. Yeah. I've seen it. You've seen it. Yeah, he can now. Um, that was that was sort of the last couple of gradient needed for him really coming through point. his coming through his you know his his prospects phase of his career. Um, now he he, you know, he he just technique has just been um, finalised where he punches. I mean he's always punched uh, punched heavy with weighty shots, but now he rotates for it. You know he gets that snap at the end of the shot, um, and then you end up with these like mega knockout finishes. Um, the right uppercut was 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 spot on. Well, you know, he always compliments you because he said, you remember coming in the gym at McGuigan's and you used to be there, you was a man on, yeah. <laughs> on form at the time and whenever I speak to him, he always uh, compliments you for, yeah. for showing him the ropes. Nice no, sweet like that, Chris, yeah. <laughs> he, he has transformed, hasn't he? I mean, he's still, he's still the big old soft, lovely guy, nice guy, the gentleman, but he's just... It's just every single thing he does, from his, from his movement to his feints to his head work. Just, it's just every single thing has been slight, slightly fine tuned. You know, yeah, he's, no, he's, he's, a, he's improved beyond belief. No, no, he, he definitely has, definitely has, and I think maybe going through the levels now um, is allowing him to show these these subtle adjustments yeah. that are make you know that are having a, a real clinical effect. Um, I say it was, there were so many times where you'd watched. Um, Chris Billum Smith and it would just be a bit of a, a rough and tumble fight yeah. a bit of a dog fight you know um, you go I go a bit of wrestling and yeah. that but now as I say he's, he's tightened up on the inside work so you know uh, I had him on my podcast this week talking about fighting on the inside Chris Billum Smith you never thought that was going to happen did yeah, you? yeah. <laughs> good point yeah. so fighting on the inside and he gives I mean because he's a clever guy he's not just a gentleman he's an intelligent guy and he's explaining you know in real thorough detail the differences um, that he's experienced um, fighting on the inside now Don't and learn. you know there was times where he was on the ropes he's catching and firing so he's already been caught when so it looks like he's been buzzed with a, a free shot a shot he should never have yeah, got yeah. caught with Steve so now he's, he's he's tightened up a little bit and he's catching and he's firing, uh, firing narrow, so he's coming for he's rather than trying to wing around the side, and then he breaks a bit longer, and then yeah, then it's the bent arm shots. You know, um, his jab is is good when he uses it. Sometimes he throws it lazy, and he and he pays the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. But he's got a, a, a fantastic, world class left yeah. hook. His right hand's coming on a lot, and he put variety on that right hand today, where it come around the side, it come to the body, and obviously with a finish right through the middle. And it's that degree of instinct that, that was the stuff that, you know, all, all good fighters have to have a degree of instinct, but it mm. depends on sort of how far you go on it. Mm. But, you know, I saw stuff tonight, you know, just did some of the instinct, some of the survival stuff, some of the jabbing, some of the different weights of Jeff, and that's particularly the finish that, that really impressed us. I mean, Chev and I were sitting there at the ringside going, that's some finish, that man. That's some yeah, finish. no, it really was. It really, really was. And um, it's, it's sometimes it can be hard. And this is, um, he's lost his European title, it's a Commonwealth title, but it's against a guy, as you said earlier, not, not everyone really knows. It's one just before Christmas, yeah. he's already had a big year. The last Everyone's written it off as a tune, that means nothing. <laughs> exactly, this could have been the banana skin fight that, um, you know, everyone has, and, you know, sometimes people pay the price for, but um, no, he showed he showed good experience today to, to weather the bit of a storm that he had and um, yeah, finish it properly. Finish it properly. 
George, it's always a pleasure talking to you. One thing, I'm going to let you get away with it tonight because I love you so much. I'm going to let you get away with plugging your podcast yeah. <laughs> on my podcast. And I'm only going to do that because I love you and we go back a long way, okay? It's one and only hit you get at that, okay? Thanks, Steve. I thought I'd get it in because I, know, I don't, you know you don't get two shots for Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much, George. Great talking to you. Yeah, you too, mate. <laughs> So George has, George has gone off there probably to do his podcast. Uh, we're, we're, we're wander this way, Chef. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, I tell you what let, let, let's deal a little bit with Carol Underwell because obviously you, you were teammates with her uh, for an awful long time. And obviously, even though she's still only a baby, she's only 21 years of age, you were, you were in Tokyo with her. Um, that, that, that was something we talked to, we've already talked to Ben about it. You know, a 60 second, one round, one, one minute, one round blowout of a of a woman that's generally really reliable. That was some finish, Chef. Brilliant finish, brilliant finish. The lady's never been stopped before. And to do it in such emphatic fashion. Handled, pushed, bashed, smashed. Yeah, well, well a little earlier, uh, Chef, um, we both left our ringside position to go and follow her. And we got into a, a dressing room. Or not, in fact, it wasn't a dressing room. She was meant to be having a medical, but there was no doctor. So we went in, sat down with her, Dr. Clark and Dr. Bunce, and had a chat with her. Please, please tell me how you finish like that. I don't know, man. I just thought, like, I was going to slowly go down and try and break her down slowly because she's never been stopped before and I knew she was durable. But as soon as I hit her, she was moving, like, she could feel the power straight away. So I just thought, Did you I'm just going to go. Away, for, sense it straight away, yeah. like, his first jab I hit with, she just kind of moved, like, straight up. So I knew that my punches were affecting her and I knew that if I just put it on her and let my hands go, the referee's going to jump in. And what about, you You seem more relaxed now. Because remember at the start of the year, let's not, let's not mess around, in Cardiff, you came in a ring and you were <laughs> like that. Let's not mess around. We're all big boys here, big boys and girls. You look like a different person. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what's happened. Um, I just feel like this is my home, you know, in the ring. This is what this is what I wanted to do since I was nine years old. I can't let, you know, my nine-year-old self down by becoming overcome with nerves. I have to do this for her and the dreams that I've had since I was a young girl. Wow. Wow. Yes, Caroline. Well, well, well put. Well put. I mean, I was seeing Caroline putting it on people at GB Boxing. So for me, this is not a surprise. Do you know what I mean? And when she came in to the program, she might have been a bit nervous, but it was just a matter of time. You've got you know? to calm down. You know, and she might have not got a medal at the, the Olympics or whatever, but you guys are going to yeah, see a but, star. But by Amazing. the tiniest of margins, let's get that right. By, by, the, the, yeah, yeah, by, by the tiniest of margins, yes. one point on one score. I was there yeah. and, and she was upset, but I'm so happy for her, man. Right, right now, I'm very happy for her. I'm over the moon. That's why I'm her number one fan. Bro. So here's the thing. Um, we know you could fight just about anybody. You yeah. go in, even if you went in as a slight underdog, you, you could have a fight. Time, you're still on your side. I know you, I know you think you can fight straight away. How, how long would you be prepared to wait? Because that's the key here. Because I, I know what you're saying. You've seen the lightweights and the light welters, and you're thinking, I can beat them. You're not, be yeah. you're not bragging. That's not what you do. But you're fancy you can beat them. But then do you need those 10-rounders? You, like, you know like Sandy Ryan yeah. had that 10-rounder. She lost, but she came back a yeah. better fighter. That's that. And that's what 10 rounds does to you, Caroline. 100%. Um, I just, I, I, I hear what you're saying, you know. I, I want to step up. Um, I've been adamant about that. I want to step up next year. Um, I want to move quick. So next year I'm going to step up, have an eight-rounder against a good girl. You know, we've already got the name lined up. She's a good girl. She's been in with some very good people. And I want to step up and see how I do against her. If I can stop her, you know, then that would tell me that my power and my ability is real. And... And I want to move from there, you know. By the end of next year, I want to be fighting for titles. Sure. She has big cheesy face. Look, basically, look at it, man. Basically, Caroline just said, "You line them up, and I'm yeah, not." Yeah, I just did. Yeah, <laughs> that is what she, she just said. I was trying to be really reasonable. Do you get that? <laughs> I'm trying to be really. No, a couple of eight rounders, a couple of tens. Twenty twenty five looks good. Now she's going. She's looking at me, going, "Shut up, yeah. shut up, and shut up quick." <laughs> but why shouldn't she? She has the talent to do it, and she works hard. I've seen her in the gym. I've been over to McGuigan sparring and stuff, and I see her work. And um, it, it's great to see. It's great to see. And her. finally, Caroline, weight-wise, I mean, you, you, lightweight's, a, lightweight's not a problem, is it, for you? I mean, that's comfort. You can do lightweight. In fact, you've got, you got a bit of time at lightweight, in your eyes, yeah? Brilliant. How much do you go up if you, if you, if, if you enter some... Let's say you went away in a big family holiday and you're away for five or six weeks. Good food, good barbecue, whatever, whatever you're eating. What can you go up to? I'm a, I cannot, you want to kill it. <laughs> Good yeah, oh, in this room you're a boxer. In this room you're a boxer. What'd you go up to? Uh, like 60, oh Jesus, 67 maybe. Oh, that's nothing, you're joking. Listen, Nassim Hamid used to grow up to about 71 and he was just stone lighter than you. That's, that, that doesn't even count, 67. Yeah. Yeah. Professionalism. 
I might ask you how much you'd go up to. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, thanks very much for your time. And see you in the new year. And it'll be a great new year. I can't wait. Oh, brilliant. Caroline Dubois, chef. You see? I introduce you all the best people. Oh. <laughs> well done again, Caroline. Thank you, I appreciate it. Go Thanks, Caroline. You Caroline Dubois, she's always, she's always really good after a fight because the adrenaline's pumping and she's a great, she's a great talker because, you know, she, she does get nervous, which, she, which she's admitted. And she's, you know, she's, she's generally not necessarily shy, but she's, she's quiet, Chef. She's, she's quiet, but she can fight. Oh, yeah, she's always been quiet. But when she's in the ring, it's a storm. Yeah. It's a storm and she, she put on a... Excellent performance. And she fancies it, doesn't she? I mean, she, you know, she, she's got the... When I, when I said that to her, you know, like, you know, you can have a, you know, spend another year like, like you're going to do. Spend another year learning your eight and ten rounds. She gave me a dagger's look as, they, oh. as if to say, shut up, I want it now. Because speaking to her back, back in the day when we was on uh, Team GB, she's always seen herself as that great person. And it was just, you know, taking a step of going to the Olympics, get a little bit more experience, and then climb the ranks of the professional. So now that she's here, for you to say, oh, one more year, she's, she's giving you the daggers. <laughs> she is. What about you, what about you, Shea? Where, 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 where are you now? When are you, when are you out? And what, what's the sort of, what's the six month, 12 month plan for you? Well, you know, Chev, you know, we take it one step at a time. Um, coming off a, a, a nice win and um, a very good win by the way thank uh, you very much. Uh, we, we talked about that a couple of pods ago uh, Fraser Clark and I sat down together okay. and, and thank you very much but yeah we're going to try and get as many fights in this year as possible as early as possible 2023 you mean 2023 yeah. so maybe January February Eddie hurry up let, let us know yeah. what's going on but yeah and then just roll on from there mm. hopefully maybe it you know, something towards the end of the year. Some, something towards the end of the year yeah. to talk about, and um, yeah. Because you, you're ready to push on, aren't you? Yeah, I'm ready you know, to you're, go. You're a big boy. You know, you're, you're a big boy. You're in a business of big boys and big girls. You've been and there. An exciting you, division and a, and a, a terrific division, which everyone talks about. Mm -hmm. Those sort of two tiers. There's, there's ten of you, really. I mean, you know, ten or eleven or twelve. They're all good fighters. You know, if you go from a Coley mm -hmm. down to I don't know, maybe a couple of guys underneath you, like say Tommy Fletcher, who's a bit less experienced, he hasn't got such a such a big background. That must be about ten of you. 12 year that's great man that's great for the business oh no it's definitely great and uh, as the the guy said earlier on you know show me the money <laughs> yeah that's that's been the theme tonight people telling the truth so one 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 last final 20 seconds on chris billam smith before we get out of here they're taking the ring down you can hear the noise in the background i've got a brilliant piece of pork pie waiting to be given to me there we go there's the handover the secret handover if you see that at venues that's nothing illegal it's just me being given a parcel of food for my way home thank you very much see you in the new year show just a quick thought on chris billam smith you know what he took a, a fighter that nobody knew that was very dangerous. And in the beginning of the fight, he didn't start very well. He had a little, you know, slip up in the, the second. But he recovered, he established his jab, established his range. And what a finish. You know, you said that you never thought that he had that in him. And he showed us something new tonight. And you can see that he's been in the gym working on it. I don't think uh, Shane and Chris Billens, Shane McGregor and Chris Billens were too impressed with me admitting I hadn't seen that in him. Because I, I, I saw that you didn't come to back me with, I didn't think you had it in, 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 in him either. I saw, Listen, I saw you left me on your own in that case. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah, to you. My, my, Cheers. My, 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 my defence ain't active when I'm outside the ring. Yeah, good <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. Mr. Sheriff, it's been a delight and a pleasure having you with us. Tonight, doing doing the comms or, or, uh, for, 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 for for BBC, and then wandering around backstage talking to different people. Siobhan Clark, we'll see you in 2023. So the second visit in one year to the BIC, the Bournemouth International Centre. It's right on the sea. You can walk from here. It will take me 50 metres to look out at the sea. I could be in the water if I was if I'd lost my sense in about three or four minutes. We had a great night in the summer in late July. We've had a fantastic night here in late December. And who knows, it looks like we'll have a fabulous night under the stars at some time in May outdoors when Chris Bill and Smith either fights for a world title or has a meet rematch with Richard Riakpour. It's been a great night. It's been a great year. I've been Steve Bunce. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Five Live Boxing.